So with Black Ops 4 right around the corner, I wanted to talk about one thing, and that is where did World War II exactly go wrong? What is going on, you guys? This is Gaming with Sal, and welcome back to the channel. Now, the main reason why I wanted to talk about World War II and where it failed is because I feel like that it's important for us fans to see what were some of the things that didn't go right in this game to make sure that Black Ops 4 doesn't do the same things. Now, obviously, we won't be able to directly talk to Sledgehammer Games or Treyarch about this, but at the end of the day, I still wanted to go ahead and share my opinions on why I think World World War II wasn't as great as it could have been. Now let's go ahead and start off with some of the smaller things first. The one thing that I felt like was an issue from the game were the maps. I think I've talked about this once before in one of my past videos, but I felt that World War II's maps were way too simple and generic. I felt like there wasn't any life within these maps or were going to be the kind of maps that I really don't remember from like 5 to 10 years from now like I did with some of the maps from games such as Modern Warfare 1, Modern Warfare 2, and Black Ops 1. And of course if I can, I'll go ahead and put up some images of the layout for from some maps from World War II and try to compare them to other maps within the Call of Duty franchise that have been successful with fans from the past games that we know and love to give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about. Overall, the maps in World War II could have had more things added to them. Now, this doesn't mean that they needed to be bigger maps or, you know, have more things added to them in terms of increasing their size because I personally love playing on medium to small size maps more than large maps, but they could have been more dynamic. Like, they could have had more verticality to them or maybe have more buildings that we can use. Basically, have more than just a three lane map that's flat all throughout and not really much to do except run throughout these three lanes. And before I move on from maps, the fact that we only got nine multiplayer maps was the ultimate downfall of the game. The fact that we had this much of a limit in terms of variety of the maps from the day this game came out, well, that already caused so many people to probably get bored after like a month of playing. And I still remember that there were a few people who tried defending this and said that, hey, at least they're giving us three war maps as well, which makes the total count of maps to 12 and then 13 if you included Carrington. But the issue with this was that the war mode was designed in a way where the developers expected fans to play it as religiously as they do with something like TDM or Domination, which obviously wasn't going to and wasn't the case at all. So for most people who weren't interested in the mode, ended up with only 10 maps and then 9 maps if they didn't want to get the season pass because the only way to get Carrington was to purchase the season pass. At the end of the day, if Black Ops 4 wants to learn from World War II's mistake, make more dynamic maps, and have more options on day one, which seems like they're already doing that, so that's great news. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about the division system. At first, when I heard that Sledgehammer Games was planning on getting rid of the creative class system altogether, I was really skeptical. I didn't know what to expect, but when the game finally came out, I was surprised that it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. However, that doesn't mean that I liked it either. The one thing that bothered me about the system was that I could only choose one basic training. I don't know about you guys, but that was my biggest pet peeve like it still bothers me today i hate how whenever i choose one basic training and see that another one would go well with it well i can't choose that other one because i already chose the one that i chose if that makes sense but once again people defended this by saying that there was at least some perks or abilities that were built into each division and that way you were essentially running around with three or four perks rather than just one single basic training but the fact that you have to play with a certain division that maybe only had like one or two abilities out of the four that you were interested in isn't exactly giving us more freedom than something like the pick 10 system did. So even though I admired their bravery to bring this change, I still feel like that the pick 10 system is a far more superior system than the division system, which is something that Black Ops 4 is once again bringing back, which is another plus. Now, even though it seems like Black Ops 4 is already fixing some of the mistakes that I listed already whenever it comes to World War II, there is still one thing we aren't sure about, and in my opinion, it's one of the most important things whenever it comes to any future Call of Duty game that's about to release and that is the system that it's going to use for rewarding players now i'm not just talking about those people who have hit master prestige or anything like that i'm talking about all sorts of reward systems i'm talking about score streaks supply drops something along the lines of armory credits if that's going to be in the game for black ops 4 weapons cosmetics etc within world war ii it wasn't as hard to earn things such as weapons cosmetic loots etc as it was in comparison to something like black ops 3 but at the same time it did require a lot of play time and recently it's gotten harder to earn something such as the new weapons during like the liberty strike event or the undead of the attack or sorry guys the attack of the undead i don't know why i twisted my words up there but you get what i'm trying to say it was a lot harder to earn some of these things in those types of events versus how it was like in the beginning of the game's life cycle maybe something along the lines of like the winter siege event another thing was the score streaks i gotta say most of the score streaks in this game were not as enjoyable to use 
only because most of them took a lot of score to earn but in the end it only got you maybe like one to two kills if not maybe up to three most of the time and i mean most of the time meaning there probably have been times where a mortar strike or an artillery barrage has gotten people a good amount of kills however it's not enough times to where it makes the streak like these fun to use i want streaks in black ops 4 where i want to earn real badly like i did with something like the chopper gunner in modern warfare 2 i know every single video that i bring up like score streaks i always use this example because whenever it comes to streaks like that that's what got me wanting to keep playing game after game now when it comes to something like world war 2 i get really bored really easily because the streaks that are fun to use cost way too much than they should in my opinion and even after earning them they're not all that great so even though we got a taste of some of the streaks in black ops 4 from the community reveal events and some gameplays that we've seen at e3 i hope they add more streaks that are fun to use sort of like black ops 3 and probably even give more options in terms of streaks since they are focusing on multiplayer much more than they have ever before and finally let's go ahead and talk about master prestige we need a better system than something like world war 2 did because i honestly don't even remember what the master prestige players get for hitting such a high level because it's nothing really exciting recently sledgehammer games announced that master prestige rewards are coming to the game but it will only be coming after like what seven months into the life cycle of the game that's not acceptable not to mention these rewards have to actually be rewarding because if they are rewards that give you something great like maybe more supply drops or maybe making the process easier to get new weapons people will actually want to hit that level and thus creating a player base that keeps playing i understand that they want to make money off of their supply drops and these weapons but it will drive their fan base quicker than they can even expect themselves if they don't use these things to reward players who at least give so much of their times to the game i feel like if black ops 4 uses these type of things as rewards like i said supply drops making it easier to earn weapons stuff like that it can give players more of an incentive to want to keep playing so they can hit that master prestige level which is something that call of duty in general needs but overall you guys these are some of the areas i feel like world war 2 lacked in a lot and caused their game to suffer and not be as successful as it could have been if black ops 4 makes sure that these issues don't repeat within their games they can definitely do much better than world war 2 did and that is something that they need for sure as well at this point but that's all i have for you guys today so if you guys enjoyed the video please leave a like comment subscribe click the bell icon so you'll never miss an upload and follow me on my social media accounts to stay connected and let me know what you guys think of the list that i compiled within this video do you agree with me is there anything do you think that i missed let me know in the comment section below but as always you guys i'll talk to you guys in the next one take care of yourselves and bye